So Ildi doesn't do anything. I do everything. So. What can you tell us about God Johnson? Aha! So, there is a man who is named God Johnson who basically claims to be God. Is he? Is he not? That is the question Lucifer will be asking himself. That's the question we'll be asking. And as he's exploring who this God Johnson guy is, you know, like, mom's here, mom's present. He hasn't had a chance to actually confront all of his, he had, he had a chance to confront all of his mommy issues. This guy claimed to be dad, is this going to be an opportunity for him to explore his daddy issues, finally to actually talk to someone? First question was God Johnson. Oh, I nailed it. people I nailed are excited it. about God Johnson. God Johnson's <laughs> awesome. It is Tim Amundsen. Yeah, Tim Amundsen. He's so good. So, yeah. So, how, I mean, what was it like to work with him and how, and his well, interactions with him? I have to say, like, we, cre when we broke the story, he was our prototype. We watched, like, get, we had Gallivant on our TV in the writers, and we were like, this guy is, you know, and he's just this twinkle in his eye and this like delicious devilness to him, kind of, that we want. And we're like, I could see him being his first dad. Like, yeah. he, you could cast similar. him to play the devil or God, and that's what's interesting. Like, you could. Well, he was Cain on Supernatural, exactly. so I like he gets upgraded. For yeah, him. right. <laughs> I know. I know. He's demoted from now on, like any other role yeah. he takes. <laughs> Can you preview a little bit about when this season comes back and Lucifer's gone? Yeah, so uh, what, I, what I love about where we left our characters is uh, Lucifer is all about choice, right? Mm -hmm. And he just found out that Chloe didn't really have a choice, at least in his mind, of loving him or caring about him. Meanwhile, Chloe just <laughs> finally kissed this guy that she's been fighting herself against and then finally got an intimate connection with him and the end of 12 it's all like there's just this, this genuine connection between them and then she gets sick and when she wakes up he's gone so from her perspective she's missed all this story right so there is some righteous anger and a lot of other things on chloe's side and on lucifer's side he's on a, a journey of trying to figure out what do you do and in now? his mind he's he's in a protective mode of her because how he feels is that if god sent her she has no choice in her feelings so she she she's they're not real and that's not fair to her. So he's, he's like, how do I break? How do I undo? How do I undo it for her sake? Yeah. Um, she doesn't so deserve to have been put on a burden called Lucifer. Like she didn't, she was put on this path. She deserves to make her own choice. But how do you do that? when she's sort of chosen to love you, but does she, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that ultimate conundrum. Yeah, for somebody who's about free will, I mean, that's his thing. That's all, you know, fate, fate, you know. Don't, you know. And he, he's like, this is the cruelest thing you could have done, is put her in my path. But what's ironic is that, of course, she's the only human who is immune to his power, so everything was her choice. Yeah. But he just doesn't, he doesn't understand himself. Doesn't so that'll be the <laughs> thrust of our mid-season premiere, and that'll be, that'll push the dynamic for our last five episodes, so. Fox picked you guys up for full season, th uh, for season three, and then recently announced that they're holding four episodes for the season uh, for next year. Are, are those four episodes in addition to the 22? So it'll be 26 episodes? So we, yeah, so what we know is we are airing 22 episodes of television next year and also shooting 22. Whether or not they'll air 24, 26, we don't know. We're waiting here. We're just breaking it as assuming that we're going to air a pro. Yeah. So we're we're going to do. Type we have four standalones, um, and, but we've, we've, we've been sort of saying they're not necessarily completely standalones because we might have a little mythological nugget that we'll lay in there that will then pay off later. Um, we designed them to start stories. So, like, what happens, like, if it had aired this season, you would have been like, oh, I wonder when they're going to pick that back up. And then you would see it be picked up, like, a couple episodes into season three. Now we're just going to air them and pick them up right after. But hopefully when you guys watch Standalones, you'll be like, is that a standalone? Is that? that oh, no, maybe not. Maybe that wasn't. Because they should, they very much feel of a whole with the story that we are telling in season three. And then I think to, to your question, we may do a couple more standalones season three at the very end in case we don't have room for all of them in full season four. We don't know. 
but what we do know is we're at least 22 and we are going to shoot 22. So there's a lot of loose for coming up. That's right. Now you're looking forward to having Los Angeles locations to play with again. Lord have mercy. Yes. Now, here's what we have to say, though. Yeah. Um, Dad, have mercy. No. Um, <laughs> no. Vancouver are, and our crew, okay, oh, we, we talk about it a lot, but they're the most amazing crew. And they've made Vancouver look like LA. It's, Which is it's not easy. Feat. You guys will have done it. So, yeah. It rains a lot. All I'm saying is a lot of rain. But, um, but yeah, we're thrilled because we have done L.A. shoots throughout both season one and season two. We'll come down for a week and get, like, you know, a day on one episode, a day on another episode and just, you know, sprinkle it in there. So this is going to hopefully, you know, feel, like, just slightly sparklier, just yeah. slightly... And we were only able to do it because of the tax break. So thank yeah. you, uh, California, because that made a big difference. Yeah. Are you guys going to change up the sets or are you going to kind of just rebuild the sets in L.A.? Uh, well, de definitely locks. Um, and probably Lucifer's penthouse, which we kind of yeah. love. Yeah, we're still we're still in early goings. So we'll probably we might make some tweaks here and there. Hopefully, ones you never notice. Um, the the clown painting will stay up. I'm just saying that right now. That clown <laughs> painting is mermaid. never going yeah, down. The clown no, mermaid from episode two thirteen. It's, really it's always going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> the season finale is it? Is it the good, the bad, the crispy? Can you, can yes. you say how what what we can expect from the finale itself? Interesting. Uh, let's say. Let's say. You know what I'll say is that we we, we do tie up every end. Um, that the whole season has been what to do about mom, what to do about a problem called mom. Well, we we figure it out. Uh, there are many choices on the table. So, you know, she could, does she go to hell? Does she go to heaven? Does she does she die? Does she, you know? And so, there's a lot of choices we pick one. And then, in our tradition, what what we love to do is every season's beginning, middle, and end, and then a cliffhanger that goes. This is what next season's going to be. I was, I'm always frustrated by the shows that give you the cliffhanger where you're like, no, I've been waiting the whole, I've been watching this whole season. You, you have not satisfied this question. We will, we will wrap that up, and then hopefully by the end you'll be yelling at your screen, what the hell does that mean? Maybe another little mystery at the end of the season where you go, what does that mean now? What is it like to have Trisha Helper and Tim Oppenheim? Oh, man. How do you know they're in the same room? I'm, I'm just assuming. Interesting. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's a very interesting <laughs> question. Yeah, that's uh, so very, yeah. very exciting. Um, yeah. Uh, put it this way: uh, God and the goddess, they lit up the universe, right? Let's just say that they, you know, the Big Bang. <laughs> We've established that. Uh, I mean, so uh, there's no the opposite of love is apathy. None of that happening here. Uh, it's, it's it's a pretty fun thing. There's, yeah. yeah, and they're just two just magical actors, so it's it's fun if they're in a scene together. If they are. As writers, <laughs> as writers and producers, how how happy are you that you get picked up at early renewal versus waiting till May? Like how, how how much does that play into your planning of the, of the next season? I mean, it helps us because we we were able to spend two weeks breaking three before we wrapped. Uh, so we have a like, and and we also have a head start with. Like, it's funny when you take a break and then start the next season. Usually, a couple of days of like, wait. What's up? Like we were just we were hitting there and running, and honestly, the the, um, the, the standalone episodes we did gave us like a fresh fresh air. They gave us sort of like a, a sort of new lease on life. Like, oh, this is a different way of breaking story. So we just we just kept running through so season three. Yeah, and now what? Yeah. You know, now what are we gonna? What's our big part now? And it was really fun to get back into the deep of mythology after. And that really allowed us to do that. And now it percolates. Now we get, you know, two months to have it back there percolate. Yeah. 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 Yeah.